Now we come to our final quick fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I'll call out ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, you know this, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is bad things for a by-election candidate to say. I would like to kiss your baby, but we don't want to go down that road again. <laughs> <laughs> I am the perfect candidate. This is an election, and I am bi. <laughs> <laughs> Vote for me, Doris McGarvey. I'd like to say no relation, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Power gives me wood. <laughs> <laughs> I've been knocking on doors in this constituency for weeks, and it's completely unconnected to the recent stranglings. <laughs> Knife crime must end. Just last week, I was given a steak knife when I clearly ordered the fish. <laughs> if elected, living standards will go up. For me and my wife. <laughs> I would say the fact that the Labour Party haven't put forward a candidate has not devalued this election at all. Ask my fellow opponents, Timmy Mallet, Elvis and the Honey Monster. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to bring crime in this constituency down by patrolling the streets at night dressed as a man leopard. I have impeccable green credentials because I've never used deodorant or had a bath. <laughs> I know nothing about politics, but I can crush a right pair between my buttocks. <laughs> OK. The next topic is unnerving things to hear during a medical examination. Yes, uh, I'll be operating. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! Come here, you've got to look at this! <laughs> <laughs> That's your smear test done, and I do have some bad news. I'm the janitor. Yes, well, it's definitely stuck up there. <laughs> we, may, uh, we may have to use the ferret. <laughs> uh, so, if you'd like to just pop your clothes over there, next to mine. <laughs> You'll live for about a week. <laughs> Well, there's good news and bad news, but don't worry, I can give the good news to your widow. <laughs> don't worry, panic over, it was just a spider on the microscope. <laughs> and uh, how does it feel if I touch you here? And here? And there? <laughs> work, but every time I prescribe them, I get a free pen. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't have your old hip back, Mrs Smith. I fed it to my dog. <laughs> this is one of the healthiest x-rays I've ever seen. But if we compare that with yours... <laughs> Right, um, I thought for a change, um, I could cough and you could hold my balls. You have the body of someone half your age growing inside your womb. <laughs> well, there's good news, you've had a baby. And the bad news, it's blown your cock off. <laughs> Things you're unlikely to hear on a quiz show. <laughs> Here is your starter for ten. Spring rolls, sesame toast and chilli balls with corn. <laughs> oh, and welcome to Ask the Family. Mr Fritzel, where's the rest of them? <laughs> We're Ant and Deck, and welcome to Double Our Money. Oh, double your money. 
my man Robinson, and if my Botox wears off, my face will turn into a scrotum. <laughs> <clears throat> Look at what you could have won if you went to school. <laughs> <laughs> Name? Ted Smith. Occupation? Carpenter. And your chosen specialised subject? The life and work of the carpenter, Ted Smith. <laughs> <laughs> For a million pounds, complete this well-known phrase. The... <laughs> uh, like a vowel. Vowel. Mm. Vowel. <laughs> vowel. <laughs> vowel. <laughs> Is the answer... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Richard Whiteley. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did Welcome to Inflation Adjusted. Who wants to be a Zimbabwe millionaire? <laughs> it's the banker. He says he's got your kids. <laughs> and your question is on celebrities. What jocular Irish host of the popular show Mock the Week is known by his friends as Dobby for his uncanny resemblance to the house elf in Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> The next topic is things that would change the atmosphere at a dinner party. Ignore the banging. She's been in there for 24 years. <laughs> Help yourself to nibbles. He was our favourite hamster, but it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Are you sure this is pork? <laughs> it's just because Mike Crackling has a tattoo. <laughs> Don't worry, we don't say grace. We just sacrifice a child to the great god Imhotep. <laughs> Doorbell! Excellent, that'll be Heather Mills and James Blunt. Opie's brought his guitar. <laughs> I hope nobody's allergic to nuts, because I like to rest mine on the table. <laughs> well, this is absolutely lovely. I say we all raise a glass to the floor! <laughs> Ten of you arrived, only one will leave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, long story short, after about two hours you couldn't tell what was poo and what was chocolate. <laughs> there is a vegetarian option. You can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a superhero movie. To the bat caravan. <laughs> I'm a superhero! Now, Russell, you've drawn an S on your forehead and you sprinkle glitter on your penis. <laughs> no, they call me Catwoman because I can lick my own arse. <laughs> hey, Lois, just before we fly off, I want to check none of your liquids are over 100 millilitres. <laughs> You're trapped, Spider-Man. Trapped in this enormous bath. <laughs> no, R. Kelly, you can't join the Fantastic Four. It's not enough to believe you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Biff! Bam! Kapow! Nutted! Bottled! Slashed! <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Whatever it is, it's heading straight for the World Trade Center. <laughs> what do you mean the swastika's already taken? I've had my cape made now and everything. <laughs> so, tell me, why do they call you Flash? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I may not seem as dangerous as other supervillains, but soon I, Dr. Sheep, <laughs> will rule the world. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> What's that, Joker? You'll be back. Somehow I don't think you will be. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
OK, the next topic is unlikely letters for an agony aunt to receive. Dear Deirdre, I'm leaving you. <laughs> I want to trace my father. Could you suggest a good marker pen? <laughs> I have recently discovered the pleasures of butter in sex. I smear it on the doorknob to stop the kids coming in. <laughs> my voice is breaking and there is hair on my chest. Is this normal? Yours, Sally Jenkins, <laughs> age nine. <laughs> Dear Betch, I have trouble making friends. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Deirdre, can that giant man lift me up like a baby? <laughs> <laughs> you bet your asses, Dan. <laughs> I have been saving up for a sex change. I don't care what my wife says. She is going to have it! <laughs> Dear Auntie, my testicles are the size of space hoppers. I don't need any advice, I just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and I are 82, and he has recently lost interest in sex. Thank God! <laughs> My wife says that I'm a compulsive liar. I think she's jealous that my reggae duet with Rio Ferdinand has reached number one. <laughs> I know where you live! <laughs> my problem is that I can only ejaculate when I hear a buzzer. <laughs> Commercials that never made it to air. Masturbation. Are you getting your five a day? <laughs> Worried about bankruptcy? Then why not paddle your canoe into the middle of the ocean? <laughs> Lidl's own brand shampoo, because you're worthless. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit me at 40 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance I'll die. If you hit me at 30 miles an hour, there's an 80% chance I'll live. Stop trying to hit me. <laughs> Poor and too lazy to cook? That's why mums shop at Iceland. <laughs> this isn't just a gimp mask. <laughs> this is an s and &M gimp mask. <laughs> Do your knickers feel uncomfortable on? Try Bacardi Breezy. If you find flying boring, fly Qantas, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Mail. Racist in public, so you don't have to be. <laughs> I'm Fern Breton, and this machine took two stone off me. It's a bacon slicer. <laughs> I'm John McCain. Why not buy my fitness video? <laughs> Are you thinking of drinking and driving? Remember, the M20 is surprisingly quiet on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost your bags. We've lost your bags. <laughs> From Gillette comes the new sensor Uber 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 XL for that closest ever shave. In fact, this one slices your face like a potato peeler. <laughs> it's too close. Get the previous Gillette sensor. <laughs> it turns out we couldn't get closer than that one. <laughs> 31 million names on three great discs. Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Now that's what I call a monumental cock-up, Volume 1. 
<laughs> Max Mosey doesn't do Nazi-themed orgies, but if he did, they'd probably be the best... <laughs> Nazi-themed orgies in the world. OK, next up again. Bad things to hear on opening the door in the middle of the night. Hello, I'm Gar O'Brien. I'd like to talk to you about Mock the Week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back from my canoe trip. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a peeping Tom in your garden, but I warned him. This is my patch. <laughs> Uh, I'll come to fix your washing machine. You asked for a call out between 12 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm afraid my cock is stuck in your letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm Max Mosley and I've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid your husband's been murdered. Can I borrow a shovel? <laughs> Hello, I'm Gordon Brown. Just hold me. <laughs> Bad things to say at a job interview. What can I bring to the job? A burning hatred of the West, a hook for a hand and a pilot's licence. <laughs> the, uh... The five-year employment gap, yeah. I was canoeing. <laughs> right, I hope we can all be professional about the fact that I've just split up with all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really only here because I'm hoping to slip on a wet floor and then fall off a ladder. <laughs> Yes, I've had a few changes of address, one wood scrubs, Broadmoor, but for the last three months I've lived in your air conditioning. <laughs> um, I'm really into diversity. In my last team, I made sure that we had a black, a fruit and a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have always wanted to work in a motel. I'm telling them, Mother, I'm telling them! <laughs> This job would be a great opportunity for me to steal a shitload of stationery. <laughs> hey! I remember you from the dungeon. How you doing? It's me, Gimpy Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gimpy Terry's mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sum myself up in three words. Well, I suppose it would have to be killer alien vagina. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I'm underqualified to be a plumber? I'm five hours late. I've done a piss in your sink. <laughs> when can I start? Yesterday. But I can only work till today. <laughs> <laughs> Nine till five, nine till five, my medication wears off at three. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on Songs of Praise. Hello, Canterbury, let's make some fucking noise! <laughs> Well, the locals here on the Shetland Isles have given us a tremendous welcome. Today we have our act of worship, and tomorrow they're burning me in a wicker man. <laughs> <laughs> they call him G.O.D. and he the Big Daddy. He look like me, but he more beardy. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sister Margaret, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> The parishioners will now go forward to receive communion if they can get past Atlas and Predator. <laughs> <laughs> Christians in one corner, Muslims in the other. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> well, the goat is strapped to the altar, so let's begin. <laughs> That was beautiful. 
It's such a shame there's no one actually up there to have heard it. <laughs> And we appear to have a streaker. No, one of the altar boys has escaped from the vestry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're enjoying this, why not turn over to BBC Three, where you can enjoy songs of praise uncut. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, choir of the week. They're not the Von Trapp family, but they were the Trapp family. It's the Fritzels from Austria! <laughs> <laughs> The next reading is from St Paul's first letter to Jim will fix it. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at the Olympics. The athletes will now go forward to receive their medals and complimentary prawn crackers. <laughs> <laughs> and there is the Chinese coxless four. It's a harsh punishment, but that's what happens <laughs> if you lose a heat. <laughs> and look! There's Paula Radcliffe in a clown outfit holding a sparkler. <laughs> we can't find a national anthem to Togo. We're going to have to use the Benny Hill theme tune. <laughs> and that is a personal best. The first time I've managed to crack one off to the weightlifting. <laughs> oh, my God, things are really exciting here at the sailing. <laughs> And there goes the bell! Someone has stolen the bell! <laughs> now, over to the Paralympics with Glenn Hoddle. <laughs> <laughs> she's past one, she's past two. Paula Radcliffe is very ill indeed. <laughs> he meddled in Sydney, he meddled in Athens, and he's gonna meddle here unless someone catches him. <laughs> And coming up, your chance to watch teenagers in leotards without feeling bad. <laughs> to show you just how polluted this city is, the javelin has got stuck in the sky. <laughs> the leading British swimmer has had to pull out of the 400 metres freestyle because he couldn't find a pound for the locker. Well, we should have done better in the shooting, and this young team from South Manchester know it. <laughs> and anyone who thinks that this opening ceremony is amazing has never been to Blackpool on ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. OK, the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a war film. We've managed to crack the Germans' code. Turns out they were sending messages in German. <laughs> Why are we speaking English? <laughs> I'm afraid we can't afford goggles. So what we're going to have to do, we're all going to have to go like this. <laughs> Terribly sorry, Sergeant. It's just that when you said let's all band together and take Jerry from behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, champs, here's the strategy for escaping from the prisoner of war camp. We sit it out till the end of the war. <laughs> I can't feel my legs! That's because your arms have been blown off. <laughs> I'm saving Private Ryan money on his car insurance. <laughs> Is anyone else embarrassed that we've all turned up in the same outfit? <laughs> There's only one way to settle this war through the medium of dance. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Tommy. I'll... I'll make sure she gets it. It's chlamydia, isn't it? <laughs> You've each been selected for this mission because you're unknown to the enemy and you each have a special skill. Professor Hawking, John Leslie, Phil Neville, 
the Wu-Tang Clan, <laughs> Usher, the Sugar Puffs Monster, and Daniel Day-Lewis. Welcome to Operation Mindfuck. <laughs> Questions that were rejected from this year's exams. If the answer is nine, what is the question? <laughs> when you finish this exam, please will you turn your paper over and mark it? <laughs> Using Darwin's theory of evolution, explain Boris Johnson. <laughs> Vladimir has 10,000 tanks and you have three. Why would you start a war? <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> By the year 2015, the population of the Earth will have increased by 20%. How do we find Kerry Katona and stop her? <laughs> Complete the following sequence. 16, 35, 24, 8, 9. Now open the safe, grab the stuff and get in the getaway car. <laughs> An object is travelling at 750 miles an hour, encounters resistance and slows to zero. For how many months will Richard Hammond have to wear nappies? <laughs> <laughs> on the diagram below, show on the body where you like to be touched. <laughs> Describe Uranus without telling your parents. <laughs> Amy is 16. At least she said she was. How much <laughs> trouble are you in? <laughs> Complete this crop rotation. Wheat, fallow, rock festival, BNP rally. <laughs> <laughs> if everybody in Class A is called Tom, Thomas or Tommy, and every second boy in Class B is called Tim, Timothy or Timmy, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a costume drama. Henry chewed her. But why did he chew her? <laughs> the Zulus have us surrounded, sir. They're standing on the horizon waving their spears. Wait a minute. <laughs> Those aren't spears. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Darcy, I do believe you've poked me on Facebook. <laughs> So, King Henry, I'm your fifth wife. Hang on, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, but... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and for the latest news from the big house, tune in to Pride and Prejudice Extra, starting now on BBC <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Pride and Extreme Prejudice, <laughs> where Elizabeth is surprised to hear Mr Darcy's views on queers and Jews. <laughs> <laughs> you think wearing this bustle makes my arse look big? <laughs> Let me read the signal from the victory. Are you paying too much for your car insurance? <laughs> I worked for the Duke of Wellington when he invented the Wellington boot and the Earl of Sandwich when he invented the sandwich. But I suppose my happiest time was working for Lord Strapon. <laughs> <laughs> My liege, your desire to marry again will split the church. Does it have to be a gay Nigerian? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the Duke! My daughter has been itching to meet you. Chlamydia! <laughs> Unlikely greetings cards. <clears throat> Congratulations, you're 18. On a list of 20 people I'm going to kill. <laughs> My heart goes out in sympathy. I know your life is torn. I can't believe your dear sweet mum caught you watching all that porn. <laughs> Congratulations on conquering your drug and alcohol dependency. We're having a party to celebrate, but you can't come. <laughs> I know you're green, I've done my bit. This card is made of recycled shit. <laughs> Get well soon! P.S. I know it's terminal, but they didn't have a card for that. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm locked up in Broadmoor and thinking of you. 
<laughs> Thinking of you at this difficult time has given me an erection. <laughs> You're moving! We've repossessed your house. <laughs> Congratulations on passing your test. You have HIV. <laughs> OK. The next topic is... Things you didn't hear at the Olympics. I am the little girl from the opening <laughs> ceremony. This is my real voice. <laughs> <laughs> that gymnast is so supple. If my wife could do that, we'd still be together. <laughs> next, the rhythmic gymnastics. You might want to start beating out your own rhythm at home. <laughs> That English track team is awesome! <laughs> and it's gold for Ireland! <laughs> well, that'll be low marks for synchronicity, but high marks for execution. Clean shot to the head, backwards off the board, pool full of blood, magnificent. <laughs> Next, over to Gabby Logan, who's going to tell us whether or not she's a transvestite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and... <laughs> and it... <laughs> go on, go again, man, go again. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. And there's fuck all no. for Ireland! <laughs> no, no, I'm not letting you off for the last Ireland joke. You're not getting on again for the rest of the show. <laughs> you are not doing another one for the rest of the show, all right? Uh, You've just been Oh, wet. let's look at the clock. It's more interesting than the show jumping. <laughs> the one thing we're all thinking during the Olympics, doesn't Claire Balding look like Eddie Izzard? <laughs> Nobody can touch this Russian gymnast except their coach and their uncle. <laughs> and here <laughs> comes... Two <laughs> <laughs> <Here> days. <it is. laughs> Well, what a morning. We've got medals in the Yingling, Yingling, Tiddly and Po. <laughs> it's Chinese athlete with number 36 in his chest. That means he's a chicken chow man. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> here... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the French have four faults. Their language, their food, <laughs> their underarm hair, and the fact that they are French. <laughs> A surprise in the canoeing where the British athlete has gone missing. <laughs> <laughs> it was after I heard the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> that I realised one thing I hadn't heard at the Olympics, right, was fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a sci-fi film. We've discovered an alien queen and she's laid enough eggs to take over the galaxy. This writing, it says, Katona. <laughs> <laughs> I am C-3PO. This is my cousin, WD-40. <laughs> All right, Chewy, you look different after that back sack and crack wax. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Obi Wan Kenobi. This is my brother, Obi Careful, my sister, Obi Have, <laughs> my dog, Obi a Sport. Use the force, Luke. I've run out of lubricant. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, uh, that's right. We aliens have learnt your language by uh, listening to your radio broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> the androids are going berserk, Captain. Let's try switching them off and then on again. <laughs> <laughs> Stardate 2171.6. Captain's log. Still won't flush. I'll try again later. <laughs> Vader, you look like a big black dildo. <laughs> 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 
Captain. Um, I've been repeatedly firing this laser at that alien, uh, but all I've managed to do is improve its eyesight and give it a Brazilian. <laughs> it's not easy being a Vulcan, Captain. <laughs> Due to my death grip, I can't masturbate. <laughs> <coughs> Had that hairball in there for years. <laughs> <laughs> You're loving Chewy. I need to break into the Death Star's computer system. Who knows Darth Maul's mother's maiden name? <laughs> <laughs> Captain, the ethereal sounds being made by this beautiful dying creature from another world is some funky shit. <laughs> OK, the that next is topic is things you wouldn't hear on the radio. In that episode of the Hugh Dennis story, <laughs> Hugh Dennis was played by Bruce Willis, Steve Punt was played by Hugh Dennis, and the band was Shawaddy Waddy. <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> you touch my turnips and I'll fuck you up. <laughs> 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 And now for a travel update. There is an accident on the M1. It's a good one, so hurry up. <laughs> There's flames and everything. <laughs> Next, a book at bedtime. Martin Jarvis reads the speeches of Hitler in a high-pitched girl's voice. <laughs> good afternoon, this is Radio 4, and I have a regional accent. <laughs> <laughs> Next on Radio 4, the dogging forecast. <laughs> Here on Traffic Watch, we're predicting long delays on the M4, where I'm about to hit my ex-wife's car with this helicopter. <laughs> and now it's the panel show where our panel try to stave off premature ejaculation. Yes, it's just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> This is breakfast with Tony Blackburn. I'm not actually on the radio. I've broken into your kitchen. Do you want toast? <laughs> <laughs> Next, more lesbian propaganda with Woman's Hour. <laughs> well, you've certainly stumped the Gardener's Question Time panel. None of us know how to bring a fox to orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Heart FM. The same five songs all day long. <laughs> 6 a.m. Welcome to the breakfast show. Who's up at 6 a.m.? <laughs> My wife's leaving me. <laughs> My dad didn't get up at 6 a.m. and he was a fucking minor. <laughs> Unlikely small ads. Did you see a hit and run in the Cromwell Road on Tuesday night? Please get in touch, because I'm keen to silence any witnesses. <laughs> Parents, worried about unruly teenagers ruining your house? You need my book, My House, My Rules, by Joseph Fritzel. <laughs> Please get in touch. Our eyes met yesterday. You were the blonde undressing in the bedroom. I was the man lurking in your garden. <laughs> Legs, bums and tums, wanted by cannibal. <laughs> Slightly used condoms for sale. <laughs> no weirdos. Are you an alcoholic? There's a sale on at Odd Bins. <laughs> House prices falling, debts rising. Feel like you can't quite cope? Pull yourself together! <laughs> Gardening done. Think I'll put my feet up now. Are you looking for a plumber who'll do a good job at a reasonable price? You've got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Anger management CDs for sale. Don't ring before noon. <laughs> Are you struggling to get out of the bath? It's pretty much game over for you, then. 
The next topic is unlikely things to hear on Question Time. <clears throat> Allow me to answer your question with a question. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> I'm going to take a question from a black man without mentioning that he's black. The man in the red jumper, please. <laughs> Do I believe the economy's in recession? Well, I believe it was Churchill who said, Oh, yeah. <laughs> David Dimbleby, you haven't answered a question all night. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> A good question there. Is the BBC dumbing down? What do you think, Barry Chuckle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my question is for Delilah. Why, why, why? <laughs> Welcome to Question Time, coming to you this week live from Spearmint Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> question Time, tonight we're in Norwich. Let's say hello to the audience. Look, men from Magic Picture Box go <laughs> speaky speaky. <laughs> <laughs> Is the wrong answer, Charles Clark. Take off an item of clothing. <laughs> so, good question. Gordon Brown, why don't you shove your tax increases up your ass? <laughs> If your dog isn't here, Mr. Blunkett, who's sniffing my balls? <laughs> I, I have a question for Boris Johnson. Do you know where you are? <laughs> Is Britain becoming more misogynist? Let's ask this bitch. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear in a travel documentary. <laughs> this man lives under a sheet of tarpaulin and has to walk for three hours every morning just to get a drink of muddy water. Nonetheless, he is happy to be mayor of Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I shall be travelling to the Middle East, to Africa, to Asia. But if I still can't find my luggage, I'll return to Terminal 5. <laughs> it's amazing to think that I'm the first white face these people have ever <laughs> seen. And the last. <laughs> <laughs> this squawk of parrots, parakeets and toucans has kept me awake all bloody night. <laughs> I'm surviving here on nuts and berries. That's the trouble with a documentary funded by Channel 5. <laughs> <laughs> on our third day of filming, an incredible discovery. Hippos are just men in costumes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, Sir Jimmy, <laughs> come in the Gilby Desert looking for water, and fortunately I have found this waddy waddy. Shit. <laughs> 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 Come on, we're not Lord Gilbert. <laughs> this week we're looking at holidays in Gatwick, cos apparently you need a passport to go to Honolulu. <laughs> <laughs> Prostitution is rife on the streets of Bangkok, so it really pays to shop around for a bargain. <laughs> Don't make the mistake I made. Nudists aren't welcome on every beach. <laughs> or at the local schools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside the Taj Mahal. In my opinion, the most beautiful, the most striking, the most awe-inspiring curry house on the Edgware Road. <laughs> Can you see the lions and the tigers and the crocodiles? Yes, good. I cannot, cos I am here in Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> After an arduous three-day bus journey, we finally reached the place Ryanair said we were flying to. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely lines from a TV detective show. <laughs> I cut myself on a glass in your bar. I'd throw that away if I were you. <laughs> because I'm Kachalski, the HIV positive detective. <laughs> <laughs> it was
was simple. I just Googled who done it. <laughs> Fingerprints? I like his music, but that's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Marple, we've got no evidence, no forensic stuff, nothing. We don't know what's going on. Don't worry, just pin it on the black guy. <laughs> so, all the suspects are linked. Thomas knows Mallinson, Mallinson knows the victim, and they all live in the flat. But what do I know? I'm only the window cleaner. <laughs> So what can we tell from these bite marks on the breasts? We can tell that I shouldn't be left alone with a body. <laughs> to be honest, Watson, I couldn't care. I'm coked off my tits. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it is murder on the Orient Express, you should try the shuttle between Glasgow and Edinburgh on Saturday night. <laughs> Where has Inspector Frost gone? I saw him only a moment ago leaning on the hatch of that wine bar counter over there. <laughs> sure, so there's shit going down in the high rise. That's what you get with crack and blow. But I ain't going to answer no more of your questions, Miss Marple. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson, we've been questioning you for days. And this is your defence? You blame it on the boogie? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got the profile of a killer, see? <laughs> <laughs> the end of that round, the point's got a Frankie Hewitt.